very seriously. Hold on to your aprons, it's Country Show Cook-Off. <laughs> this week, Top Chef's Valentine Warner and Ed Baines trek cross-country, competing at some of Britain's best country shows. Look at that, that's a great view, isn't it? This really is the way to see the British countryside, nice and slowly. They'll be facing tricky show categories on a strict itinerary, taking them from Yorkshire to the south coast and back. Today they're in Otley, not only birthplace of celebrated 18th century furniture maker Thomas Chippendale, but its spectacular scenery has inspired some of Turner's landscape paintings. And the Piers Culinary Cook-Off begins as a country show in this picturesque town, just south of the Yorkshire Dales. How do we compete against the um, Yorkshire Roulards Mafia? Yeah, and did they make their Roulards in a field? The Otley Country Show is one of the oldest in the land. First held in 1796, local farmers came together to compare livestock and improve breeding techniques. Each year, around 15,000 still gather to show their animals, compete for prizes, and have a good old time. I don't mind if I don't win because I'd always enter because it's Otley Show and it's great to be part of the community. I was born and brought up in Otley and I like to come, it's feeling part of the community. Our cooking colossi will be entering class 39, the savoury roulard category, in one of the toughest competitions of their lives, facing some of Otley's finest with years of show experience. Critiquing their homemade handiwork will be Mr. MK Pickles. After picking up thousands of prize cards himself, he turned his hand to judging 15 years ago. So, how do you get a rosette from a roulade, Mr Pickles? When I'm judging, I'm looking for uniformity, good taste, good presentation and good colour. We don't like odd ones, they've, they've got to conform. <laughs> Rules vary from show to show. This time, there's no specific policy about presentation, but Mr. Pickles is partial to a doily. So our chef's best clear up for one humdigger of a cook-off. Me, worried. I'm terrified. But the WIs contend with no more fiercer organisation in the whole country. Best-selling cookery author Valentine Warner has cooked up a storm at some of London's best restaurants and he's a sucker for seasonal ingredients. So here I've got some stinging nettles. I'm not even going to wear gloves because I'm such a man. Whilst head chef Ed Bain's oyster and champagne restaurant is a smash in London's swanky Soho. Ed's partial to the finer things in life, both in and out of the kitchen. My other car's a Lamborghini. Our gastronomic duo are setting up camp within the 180 hectares of the Chevin Forest in the Wharf Valley. Great spot, look at this. Wow, beautiful. This natural ridge rises above the town, creating stunning views, ideal for our chefs to work al fresco from the back of their small but perfectly formed kitchen in the van. Our boys will be rustling up the scrummiest of savoury roulards to try and tempt the toughest of taste buds at the Otley Country Show. I'm going really um, left field on my heading into the hedgerows. That's dangerous if yeah. you ask me because I'm going for the tastes and flavours that are very familiar and what I'm going to try and do is just achieve something that absolutely is correct. So, what did you say the thing was telling you? <laughs> <laughs> Careful lads! Tactics are key, but remember, the judge doesn't like odd ones. Otley's bustling marketplace dates back to Saxon times, and now the town has its own gourmet food trail. Val and Ed take some time out to explore the area to find out what foodie treats it has in store. I brought male and female crab for you. Before our lads begin their cook-off, Val's going to meet one of these local artisans. Stephen Taylor's bakery supplies Harvey Nichols, I don't know if he's got any tips on making roulade, but he's passionate about traditional baking. What does bread mean to you? Well, I guess it means all sorts. Um, it's one of the few things, really, that's sort of left on the high street as well, if you look at it. We actually do make something from scratch here. Yeah. Um, you know, in, the, in these times when most of our industry seems to have disappeared, it's nice that there's some things that are left. 
and it's embraced uh, by the people of Otley, really. Stephen's parking, a Yorkshire delicacy, is legendary among the locals. It's a traditional Yorkshire thing. Treacly, syrupy, it's not like a cake, it's not like a bread, it's just nice. Will you teach me how to make a parking? Margarine, yeah. syrup, it's treacle, black treacle, muscovado sugar. So all of this, yeah, just wants to be gently melted, really. It's got that smell of kind of garage, something primitive about it's it. It's primitive. Mm. Yeah. Then the gooey goodness is ready to mix with the other ingredients. How long have you been making parking for? Can you do it with your eyes closed? Uh, I'm probably not. It might be slightly dangerous, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, since uh, you know, since I was um. Nothing but a young child. Yeah. These are the dry ingredients. Okay. Flour. Okay. Coarse or pinhead oatmeal. Yeah. And that one's medium oatmeal. Okay. Coarse stuff. We put this in really because it gives it an extra bit of crunch. I've put crystallised ginger in it Ooh. before, which Ooh, is really, I really nice. Yeah, it is. What about hot fresh ginger? Yeah, I haven't done. Could be nice. It could. It's something for the future. Anyway, I haven't even eaten a simple parking before, so maybe I should just pipe down with <laughs> <the> bright <laughs> ideas <laughs> until I've eaten it. <laughs> That's right, the proof of the pudding. <laughs> and then baking powder. So can I give that all a bit of an You can give that a bit of the old uh, yeah. And then, you want to pour all okay. the hot stuff into there. Okay, so, two litres of castrol. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> my puny southernness is coming through. Yes, so so you, think you need to start loosening. Get the get the milk in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's quite stiff. Okay. Now that's it basically. In it goes. The whole thing. Get that. Out. That'll do. Yeah. That's it. Ready to bake. Okay. Tuck into a 180 degree oven for up to 45 minutes, or until springy to the touch. Here we go. This should be yeah. good looking. That looks rich. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you'd think he'd know better. Just beautiful. This is cake with attitude. Why would you ever eat a cupcake when you have parking? <laughs> And while Val is stuffing his face, Ed's got his eyes on the game, and one of his tricks to try and win over the judge is using Yorkshire produce. This is locally grown. The uh, rhubarb is... I just have one bit of rhubarb. Yeah. yeah. Got to, really, in Yorkshire. Yeah. Fantastic. Ah, oh, but that's enough dilly-dallying, lads. You've got to get a wiggle on. Those savoury roulards must be ready for judging at tomorrow's Otley show. A, you're adorable. B, you're so beautiful. C, you're a cutie full of charm. What is he singing? Too much parking, Val. Too much parking. You're a feather in my Come on, never mind the feathers. It should be F for focus. Get on with it. I always pretend I'm not competitive, but my wife just says, look... You're amazingly competitive, just admit it. <laughs> and Val's so competitive too. He's concocted an unusual Phil Green's roulade with a shrimp filling to try and impress the judge. Ed, on the other hand, is playing it safe with a more classic roulade, hoping to gain the advantage for his side dish. First, it's Ed, who's knocking up his traditional smoked salmon and courgette roulade with a veggie chutney. In my chutney, I'm going to put tomatoes in there, some lovely shallots, a little bit of garlic, get some strong flavours. Now these country shows are strict and when they say roulade, they mean roulade, not chutney. I've got a piece of muslin and we're going to make a little package of wonderful aromatics. So it's a little, like a little money bag. It's star anise, it's got a great flavour. Some whole cloves, in they go, a few black peppercorns. There. there we are. Just let it gently bubble away. And there we go. So pop that in the, in the pot. Where Ed's already got half a pint of white wine vinegar, 125 grams of sugar and a smidgen of salt. I'm going to make this all very ladylike. So you'll never assume that a man with big hairy hands has made this dish at all. Then he chops the veg, shallots and grates fresh horseradish. Beautiful rhubarb, look at that. The key element to this is my beetroot. In the old days, used as a dye, the early Brits used to rub it all over themselves before going into battle. I think I might do that actually tomorrow morning. 
Actually, I hope to win. And I'm hoping to win one of those rosettes that says first on it, and I'll pin it right here, and then sort of walk around with Val a lot. <laughs> All right, Ed. Chutney had its own class at the show, so Ed's pickle could leave him in a pickle if it's completely ignored by Judge Mr. Pickles. Mm. Finally, Ed turns his attention to the roulade. The thing I think might be advantageous is this beautiful fresh air that's blowing through my recipe. Give it a real taste and flavour of Yorkshire. Next thing, two courgettes. It's great away. It actually goes in to the roll itself as you bite through it. <laughs> Lovely deliciousness. Right, nice bit of salt. This is going to draw the water. I need the water from the courgette and let it just steep for a while. And along with some chopped herbs. Squeezing out your courgettes into there. Get the water out. Start squeezing out your socks. Lovely. Ed may not want it watery, but between you and me, I'd have added an egg to keep it moist. That's coming on. Wow. Hello, mate. So we've got our lovely Yorkshire beetroot rhubarb chutney. Yeah. It's just bubbling away, but it's got those nice flavours of the county, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Mm. Oh, that's very refreshing. Right, I've got to make this filling into the cream cheese. Then he bangs in chopped chives, spring onion, garlic, rocket, watercress, ooh, black pepper, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Filling done. Now he's just got to bake that eggless sponge. Hmm. Ten minutes in the oven, and Ed's roulade should be ready to roll. God bless and all who serve in her. Lovely. I'm quite pleased with myself. Now Val's taken over the kitchen for his field greens roulade with brown shrimp. Roulade in a field. There's all the other entrants and their nice cosy houses, sipping cups of tea or maybe even a glass of wine, taking it at a very leisurely pace. And here am I in a windy cold field with it just about to rain. I've taken a very different approach from Ed. Ed's is more kind of cakey, bready kind of thing. I'm going for more of a souffle, light and fluffy approach. In go my shallots. Some celery salt, not normal salt. It's got a bit more attitude, a bit meatier in a way. So here I've got some stinging nettles. I'm not even going to wear gloves because I'm such a man. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. I want to show that, you know, southerners can be tough as well. Ow. Mm, on second thoughts. I've got some wild garlic here, but once you start cooking wild garlic, then it kind of loses its attitude, so I'm going to put it all in. Making a whole kilo of mixed greens. My nettles, wild garlic and spinach are nearly ready to come out, so I've got some cold water to refresh them. It'll stop them cooking straight away, keep their colour. I hope there's no beetles or nice insects underneath this. Make sure that's really well drained. Okay, then in it goes cold water, cool straight, straight away. I need my greens to be as dry as possible. So I've really got to wring them out. Otherwise I'm going to end up with a really soggy mess. Who needs a sink when you've got a field? Go on. Val then pops chopped marjoram in with the shallots. And I'm going to add one of my favorite spices of all. Great with nettles. Do a little bit of nutmeg again. Don't overdo it. That marjoram. Nutmeg, celery salt, oh yeah. So, how's that eggless roulade sponge getting on, Ed? Um, I'm not, I'm not very happy at all with this. The texture's wrong, it's dry. Gotta redo it, I think. Mean. Right, what's going on? Well, it's no good, but it's sort of dry. Oh, <laughs> I thought so. Rather than flap around, the idea is just to destroy it. <laughs> That's very drastic. Throw it somewhere and the birds will have it. I love it. <laughs> it's more like a doorstop in it, Ed. Space is tight and it's not just Ed's roulade that's cracking under pressure. I'm having a tiny strop at the moment, in case you were wondering. But my um, everything's just blowing all over the place. And, you know, this is fine, this is camping. But when it's a competition, it's a slightly different matter. Right, so. Val's whizzing up his field greens, shallots, and not forgetting egg yolks. I want to